So, what exactly is happening in Venezuela anyway? Well, if you want to find out, just stay tuned for more. Hey guys, before we get started, I want to say a few quick words. Now, if the intro seemed like you've seen it before, it's because this is the same Venezuela episode that you watched a little while ago. Thing is, I got a copyright strike. Yeah, I know. Horror. And um, since I got a copyright strike, um, it got taken down completely. It's like disappeared off of face. I mean, this disappeared off of YouTube. So, you know, I was gonna just leave it there and I talked to the person that I got the copyright from to see if I can fix this. Still has yet to be resolved. Don't know if, if it's gonna get resolved. But again, this episode was just too good for me to just like let it disappear off of, fit, off of, of YouTube. So what I decided to do was um, re-edit it. And now it, it's, it was a little hard because I already deleted all the footage. And so I just kept the final you know, product. So I, I got that and I had to re-edit that in order for you know, me to you know, be able to post the episode again. Now, if you're curious as to what got me the copyright strike and or you're just curious, you know, I want to see that footage again, I'm going to leave a link at the bottom so that you guys can at your, you know, free time can go to that channel and check out, you know, the, you know, the content that's missing. Now, I'm going to try my best in order to, you know, fill in the blanks with other footage and uh, hopefully um, I can, you know, uh, keep the episode good meaning I know the episode is gonna be great um, but I'm just saying I just um, I'm about to edit it right now now I, I really want your guys help please um, this video is is gonna be most likely censored because it's talking about Venezuela so if you saw it please watch it again and if you don't have the time again I'm not gonna obviously I'm not gonna ask you for something you don't have um, then at least you know leave a like try to share um, whatever you know what I mean what really helps the most for all of my videos is watch time the longer you watch the video and if, especially if you watch it all the way through that is what helps the most out of any algorithmic thing that you can do it helps more than thumbs up more than comments more than sharing more than anything it's literally the longer you view the video the better it is for my channel and and videos of, uh, of any kind so please um, just um, help me out um, with this video if you can, and if not, it's totally cool. I understand. I post videos every day, and I'm here for entertainment purposes more than anything else, and educational purposes more for anything else, and it's all voluntary. So again, guys, I just want to give a big shout out to all you guys, and uh, and um, I hope you guys um, enjoy this episode again, uh, the remix. <laughs> and um, and for all you new viewers out there, for all of you guys that missed it the first time around, well, here it is again because again. This thing not only did it get lost in the algorithm and get lost in YouTube, but it d eventually got literally taken off the radar, literally taken, uh, scrubbed off the internet. So without further ado, here is the lost Venezuela episode. Lambo, do you really honestly think that the U.S. is going to be taking over the Venezuela? Come on, man. That's not going to happen, bro. Don't be, li don't be, listen, you've been watching too much of that propaganda, man. Anyways. How's it going guys and welcome back. Today we're talking about Venezuela. Now I know I haven't made a video talking about Venezuela in a while but I just finished making an Argentinian video which you probably watched a couple days ago and um, I decided you know what let me make an update video on what's going on in Venezuela because there's just so much going on in Venezuela on so many fronts and uh, I've talked briefly about these things you know in my live streams and uh, you know in other in other videos here and there but I honestly uh, sorry back hurts long day but I honestly haven't covered um, the whole Venezuela thing in a while um, so I decided you know after just making the Argentinian video I said you know what I, I gotta make a Venezuela update so um, I made myself some more coffee I just uh, started to you know watch a few videos while I was making the coffee you know just to update myself on you know what's going on right now with Venezuela and um, yeah here I am let's talk about Venezuela so let's talk about with uh, the more recent things that are happening um, as of today uh, which is Tuesday uh, you're watching this probably on Thursday um, September 6th or something like that um, as of uh, early September 2019 um, 
you, the U.S. is now again, you know, telling uh, Maduro and telling Venezuela, hey, we're going to come over there and take you guys over and blah blah blah. And um, you know, why why were they saying that? Well, the reason they were saying that was because Maduro and the Venezuelan government ordered its troops, ordered uh, Russian troops, ordered uh, Cuban troops, ordered you know Venezuelan troops, ordered you know their troops to go and line the border of Colombia. Um, you know, because again, the U.S. is lining the border of Colombia in the direction of, uh, of Venezuela. So Venezuela is, uh, you know, wants to prevent a takeover from the U.S. from Venezuela, you know, from Colombia. So they put troops on their side of the border. One second. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Had to get the door real quick. But anyways. Um, yeah, so like as I was saying, um, you know, we're going to be talking about Venezuela very heavily in this episode. In fact, that's all we're going to be talking about. It's all an update. So that's like the military update. We already know that the U.S. Uh, and Trump and the central banks are all, you know, trying to take over Venezuela. And they're doing everything humanly possible to take over Venezuela. And the only reason that the U.S. and uh, the central bank-led U.S. coalition has not... Um, fully uh, taken over Venezuela yet is only because Russia and other, um, you know, and China and other nations are backing uh, Venezuela and helping Venezuela. Like again, you know, um, Russia and China are helping them. Uh, Russia's helping them heavily militarily. China, some military support, but, um, you know, more, um, you know, humanitarian support, but support because again, China has a lot of vested interest in, uh, in, in, um, in uh, Venezuela, as a matter of fact, um, they just, Venezuela and China just uh, um, celebrated 45 years of relations together. So, you know, again, it's very, um, you know, it's a strong relationship that they have there. You know, and then there's other nations, you know, like, uh, for example, Turkey, which uh, holds uh, Venezuela's gold because they're afraid if they hold their own gold in Venezuela, that uh, the U.S. could take it out, to could take it, or if they put their gold uh, in other banks, like in the Bank of England or in any other European bank, then it will be seized because it, uh, other gold that was in other, you know, European banks has already been seized by, you know, these international bankers. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on there. Um, I don't think I've made a video talking about this, you know, recently, but, you know, the Petro is alive and well and kicking, and um, I know nobody's talking about the Petro coin, and, um, and uh, retrospect uh, right now within the crypto community, that Petro coin is a laughing stock, but, you know, I don't think people are understanding the exact uh, reason uh, for the existence of the Petro coin, okay? Because the reason that the petrol coin exists is just, it's literally to get around the dollar. As we all know, um, Venezuela, um, as of, uh, you know, a while ago, um, but as of today, um, you know, but, but again, you know, there's already been a while now, you know, Venezuela has been um, taken off the banking um payment system you know they're since you know since they kicked out the central banks uh and since uh, the united states and central banks around the world are in, a, in an economic warfare against venezuela um venezuela has not been allowed to use uh you know electronic electronic money transfers to you know um do very basic uh you know uh, purchases of uh goods commodities um uh, you, you know, again, you know, things like uh, medicine and food and all kinds of things. And again, you know, that's why there's this crisis in Venezuela, which, by the way, there is absolutely, um, there's only an economic crisis, but um, it's not what the media tells you. If you go to Skid Row in Los Angeles, it's um, actually, there's more people, um, you know, hungry and more people in poverty and more people struggling. And, uh, you know, again, just in like uh, Skid Row of Los Angeles and uh, San Francisco and um, in a few other places, uh, then all of Venezuela combined. And that's just really the reality of it. And uh, But that's another story for another day. We, um, you know, most of you guys that have clicked on this video, already know that most of that propaganda is fake phony and false and uh, you know you're just here to get an update on what's really going on over there so you know that the whole petro coin and the whole petro payment system that you know the venezuela developed is actually alive and well because 
you know, again, um, <clears throat> you know, Venezuela <clears throat> is trying to figure out a way in which to get around the dollar. And it's funny because um, we're going to touch this in a little bit later, but as of today, right now, the, the dollar is alive and well in Venezuela and people are using the dollar as uh, currency. Now, it's not the official currency by any far, you know, stretch of the imagination. There's no way that, you know, they would allow that. In fact, it's illegal, but you know, because of the economic situation that's going on right there, right now in Venezuela, um, the Venezuelan government is allowing uh, these dollars to be used uh, as currency, same as Bitcoin, um, and, and so on and so forth. There was a time when Bitcoin and the U.S. dollar were straight up banned and illegal, but the, you know they have lifted this, these restrictions as of late, or in, in a sense, you know, look the other way, so that you know they can continue, you know, so they can actually have their economy, you know, try to you know um, even out or possibly recover you know so that's you know they're they're trying to figure out now again you know what's going on in venezuela is a disaster but it, it really wasn't caused by uh bad leadership sure there was some bad leadership and i'm not saying the leadership there's great or anything like that but we you know you, you, there's no denying the fact that um if the you the, you know the united states and all of its sanctions and all of its uh, economic warfare against venezuela had its toll on it just like it has its toll just like um the that same economic warfare has had its toll you know all over the world in various countries in which you know um they've done this so right now um you know we're just gonna you know we're you know go, coming back to what we were talking about so now with the petrol um again you know the petrol was uh being developed by russia you know now the, the petrol was being developed by venezuela but obviously we know that you know of uh, either venezuela or russia you know which one of these two countries is the actual um, better at technology and you know it's russia in case you, you know you know you guys don't know <laughs> but anyways um it's okay if you don't know don't worry i'm just anyways but the point is that so russia um, you know, part of the, the trade agreements and part of, uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, the inner, you know, the, the what is it, the, the healthy relationship that they have um, with Venezuela and Russia. You know, Russia is helping Venezuela, has been helping Venezuela. Russia has helped them develop the petrol and the petrol coin, the petrol blockchain, the petrol um, currency system and so on and so forth. And mainly, you know, try to try to establish some sort of a system, economic system within Venezuela uh, away from the dollar, but they haven't forced it on the, on the people yet. Despite what you hear, they just haven't because they haven't, you know, they just haven't because things will be very different right now. And even if, you know, this was forced on the people, um, it, it would be straight up, you know, um, interchangeable for bolivars and again you know exchange for dollars or bitcoin or whatever currency so even if there's people out there right now getting paid in petros they can very easily on their banking app in venezuela change it for bolivars and then if they need dollars to dollars and if they need whatever bitcoin or whatever the fuck they need change it to that so it's 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 it, you know it, it, it's happening you know what i mean regardless and it's not like it's it's not hindering uh the venezuelan people or the venezuelan uh, economy in fact it's doing the complete opposite now the main reason for the petrol is is basically because russia you know can now do straight up business with venezuela and now russia can act as the bridge okay um for venezuela so that venezuela can now again in, um transact on the world stage again so now you know, uh, it, it, you know there's a few nations out there like china and russia that do accept the petro and vice versa you know what i mean so you know china's heavily invested in venezuela so they'll definitely accept that petro because it's just like accepting bolivars they really don't care you know what i mean at the end of the day um they're paying off their debt in yuan and um if china if for whatever reason is not happy with these petros they just say hey give us some oil and venezuela be more than happy to comply because that's part of the agreement now with russia they have a little bit more of a, of a vested interest in developing this uh, cryptocurrency um, for monetary movement because again, uh, Russia's doing the same thing as well, and they're you know they're trying to take the lead on trying to get away from the dollar and create some other crypto some other currency that you know will subside and go around the dollar uh, dominance and uh, and you know whether they're creating their own. Uh, you know russian crypto ruble currency or you know whether they're creating another currency it doesn't matter but they you know everyone is uh around the world you know one form or another getting away from the dollar as we, we talked about argentina before they you know um if, nine months ago uh, argentina you know was all was literally almost forced to 
accept the dollar, meaning in a sense that like, you know, um, the only currency in all of Argentina was gonna be dollar. It was just gonna be dollar and no more Argentinian peso, but the people and the government, you know, um, reversed that and now, as of today, um, now, um, dollars are being restricted in many forms and uh, there and the population of Argentina is being forced to use the Argentinian peso just like we saw in uh, in Venezuela and we've seen all over the place but we already know where this ends because you know as uh, we're gonna be talking about in a second right now what's happening in Venezuela is that dollars are being freely used again and now dollars are being used because you know there needs some sort of stabilization within their currency and uh, if you ask the typical Venezuelan you know, till today, you know, now, you know, if it was a few months ago or a year ago, you know, no one was accepting these bolivars and uh, these Venezuelan bolivars were really um, worth beyond nothing. But as of today, because more people out there are accepting dollars and there's, you know, things like cryptocurrency and the Petro and all these other, you know, um, means of exchange. Now, um, these bolivars are starting to you know get you know get some more circulation is starting to be used again now they're not the preferred method of payment they're not the preferred method of uh of currency but they you know now more people are using them and uh and uh they're being accepted again and they're circulating because at the end of the day the venezuela in order for venezuela to stay afloat as a country they need to continue issuing and um and accepting and using and the whole thing with bolivar so you know right now um the exchange rate and i think it's changed already but it's around fifty thousand bolivars for you know 50 or for five dollars or so five us dollars is around fifty thousand bolivars and the most you can take out uh per day from your bank account is five dollars fifty thousand bolivars and you're asking yourself, well, how do people get, you know, dollars? And was like, well, there's a lot of ways that people get dollars, all right? And especially if they have uh, opened, uh, left, um, I mean, lifted the restrictions on uh, how people accumulate these dollars. Now, as you guys already know, Venezuela was one of the wealthiest, um, well, was the wealthiest nation in all of Latin America because of the whole oil situation. So there's a lot of wealthy families and there are still wealth within Venezuela. Sure, there's a lot of poverty and um, the whole economy, the whole economy has fallen and the middle class has suffered as they always do. Um, this is why, you know, why I always make these videos to educate you guys and warn you guys because most people out there are what? Middle class. But anyways, um, the point is that like everyone is, uh, has, has been suffering, but it's not, you know, as dire as, uh, you know, the mainstream media will let you know. I mean, this is not. And especially now that things have, uh, you know, they're getting better. They just are as, as, uh, as the economy, the economy is actually getting better. And it's only because uh, now they're, you know, recirculating dollars. And, um, but anyways, the point is that like, um, um, as I was watching a lot of these videos, a lot of these individuals out there, what they're, what they're doing is that, you know, they price things in dollars and then um, they, um, they accept whatever, you know, meaning they'll accept Bitcoin, they'll accept Euros, they'll accept, um, 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 you know, the Bolivars, you know, the Venezuelan Bolivars, they'll accept dollars, they'll accept whatever. So, well, if you ask the typical Venezuelan, they, they understand that the dollar is losing value every single day, but when you compare it to um, the Bolivars, you know, the Bolivars are constantly losing value and at a much higher rate, and again, it's, it's measured against the dollar, so most people opt to have dollars. And, um, you know, most, uh, most Venezuelans within their bank account have dollars and bolivars and they freely exchange and they exchange it, meaning that they send bolivars from point, you know, to another bank account and there's people out there that exchange it. So, you know, the whole um, exchanging of all this, just like purchasing Bitcoin, mining Bitcoin and all these other things, you know, all, all these things are not restricted at all. Even though there might be laws or certain restrictions, you know, and things like that, everyone is really looking the other way. And, you know, I've, again, just from my own re recent research before I started filming today, um, that, that's one of the things that kind of like, uh, you know, blew my mind a little bit because I thought they would really be anti anti dollar, but I, I get what why they're doing. You know what I mean? I really get it. But you know, if it was just a dollar, I would be more worried. But the fact that you know, since there's you know, there's Bitcoin and there's uh, the Petro and you know, there's uh, Dash, which is another cryptocurrency for those that don't know. Um, and uh, you know, there's you know, other methods out there. You know, digital currencies and other methods in which people exchange. You know. You know, uh, literally people barter. So, you know, uh, I don't know if I'm, I have the clip or not, but there's, you know, someone out there that was like literally asking the, you know, she went to go get gas and she was just asking, hey, can I pay you in fried plantains? 
meaning these right here. So she goes, can I pay you in these? You know, like homemade these. It's like, hey, can I pay you in fried plantains? And the guy's like, yeah, of course, no, no problem. Now, of course, she was paying for gas in Venezuela, and for anyone that doesn't know, um, you know, gasoline in Venezuela is like pennies and shit, but regardless, you know, I'm just, you know, it happens, you know, but there's a lot of barter, it's a lot of, uh, you know, people that, um, you know, have um, a lot of, um, you know, vintage, uh, you know, garage sales, a lot of vintage, um, what is it, like, um, Farmers markets and sales and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just because I'm gonna show you guys here um, some clips of that. But regardless, um, so you know what's happening and with the whole Bitcoin world is now. You know, let's just transfer to that. You know, because we're talking about a lot of the the economy and the currency situation that's happening in uh, in Venezuela. So right now, you know, the Venezuelan government has allowed you know um, for the whole Bitcoin uh, mining and Bitcoin. Uh, you know, uh, use that currency and all these other things in crypto to to flourish because again they need to because if they don't then you know they, they close themselves off, um, which is again what you know what Argentina is kind of doing as well. Remember, Argentina is in a almost like opposite polar opposite version of what's happening in Venezuela because their their economy is run by central banks and. Um, you know, right now they're going into the mode of uh, getting rid of the dollar and, and, and you know, just having, um, um, you know, Argentinian pesos and they're already saying we're going to have universal basic income and blah, 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 blah. So once it gets like hyperinflated and it becomes Venezuela, then the dollar and all these other things are coming in. But again, you know, just like Venezuela, you know, was using before hyperinflation through hyperinflation and now, you know, Argentina is a big proponent of Bitcoin and crypto and all this other stuff. Again, why I, you know, make these videos to help educate you guys and really give you more context on to why these things are important you know I understand why a lot of you guys in uh, in most developed countries don't really see an importance for Bitcoin because your currency hasn't failed but the minute that the dollar fails or the Canadian loonie fails or the Australian dollar fails or the euro fails well guess what you know you're gonna go straight to Bitcoin if you don't believe me ask Italy ask Greece ask Argentina as Venezuela and the list keeps growing day by day as Iran, as Turkey and again you know coming to a country near you you know with hyperinflation so um, you know what I was gonna get at to the point is like you know why is uh, Bitcoin mining allowed in uh, Venezuela well because it, the cost of mining one Bitcoin in Venezuela right now is still like around the three thousand five hundred dollar range again to mine a Bitcoin in Venezuela is around $3,500. To mine a Bitcoin pretty much anywhere else around the world, it's at cost, meaning that if you're mining a Bitcoin in the US, it's around $10,000 or 10 dollars or you know, most likely right now, most people mining Bitcoin in the US are doing it at a loss. But again, you know, you're mining Bitcoin, you know, it's worth it, right? But, um, but when it comes to places like Venezuela, you know, come on. So the government, ha you know, definitely allows, you know, people to mine Bitcoin. They just look the other way. Because obviously, you know, this helps boost the economy of Venezuela and it helps, you know, people from avoiding poverty and so on and so forth. So, you know, when it comes to cryptocurrency, it's alive and kicking in many shapes and forms. Again, whether it's Dash, electronic money. All right, I'm gonna play a clip right here. Hello, Dash community. Here, Alejandro Echeverria from Dash Shop, Dash Merchant, and Dash Tex. It is September 12th, and right now I'm in the mall CCCT in Caracas, Venezuela. Um, I'm gonna have lunch in Subway, and I will pay in Dash. So follow me. So, guys, you won't believe me, but the guy is telling me that the Fiat POS system right now in the mall, in the CCCT mall, is not working in any store. So, uh, another reason to use Dash. The kings, I see. Okay, fine. Vale. So this is a perfect reason to use Dash and the demonstration that cryptocurrencies can can solve these kind of issues. I'm about to pay the sandwich. So I'm scanning the POS system. It is nine nine eighty nine point twenty eight. So this is the sandwich for three cent. And it should confirm the transaction in the POS in a few seconds. Ready, nice. So they received the payment. Eat it, my sandwich. Yeah. So to record this one. This is the, the POS, which, which shows the POS is, is broken. A punto dañado. So, ¿tiene pechila, mi pana? Sí. Hey Dash community, here Alejandro Echeverria, co-founder of Dash Shop, Dash Merchant and Dash Text. 
and I'm Lorenzo Rey, co-founder of the same projects. Today we want to show you how to send Dash easily from a dumb phone. Look at this. Look at this thing. The screen is even broken. This thing is like 12 years old or something like that. We're going to send some Dash to Alejandro's wallet right now. Dash Text is almost ready for launch. I mean, the product is ready, and it's already live in one carrier, the, the biggest carrier, Venezuela Movistar. It's already working, and the other two carriers should be activating our short codes very soon. So, so let me repeat. We're going to send Dash from this down phone using Dash Text to this smartphone. So check it out. So as you guys can see, I already typed the Alejandro's address in this message. So I'm going to send it to the Dash Text number so I can make the payment. Okay, the message is sent. Of course, for security purposes, and if you make a mistake, we send a verification message so you can confirm that you're sending the right amount or to the right address. So it should be arriving very shortly. There it is. So let's check the inbox. It's right there, confirming the amount. So I'm going to send the verification message, which is in Spanish, that's C. Exactly. Okay. So today is October 20, 2018. Sending to the same number. And the message is sent. Should I arrive very shortly? Let's focus in. And that's it. And there I it received the Dash. So the first uh, transaction from Dash text to a smartphone wallet. Exactly. We're so excited. excited to bring this to you guys. Here's some, you know, that I just showed you a, a couple videos on Dash, on, you know, just for, for those of you guys who haven't seen it yet, you know, how Dash, you know, is being used, a cryptocurrency in Venezuela. We've already talked about Bitcoin. We've already talked about the Petro. We've already talked about, you know, them, you know, um, starting to accept other currencies. We're, we're talk, we've already talked about how Venezuela's central bank um, allows, you know, dollar usage and transfers. I think, okay, so we talked about the fact that, uh, the United States is, uh, well, we briefly touched on it, the fact that the United States is uh, continuing their threats and their, you know, um, chokehold of Venezuela, whether it's economic or militaristic. Um, Russia and China and others that are um, uh, friends with um, Venezuela are now you know, um, just doubling down, tripling down and helping Venezuela even further. And um, again, helping Venezuela remain stable by, you know, putting troops or you know sending aid or you know developing the cryptocurrency or whatever and creating stability because again I, I, you can just look at for yourself man you know there's tons of videos out there even though they're crazy suppressed but there's tons of videos and information out there where you get to see what's really happening in venezuela and everything is fine again things aren't great things are perfect and things are really you know a shit show but things are fine that you know oh my god things are really bad in venezuela but they're, they're really not they're, they're just really not i think anyone that that knows what the fuck is up and really just does a little bit of actual real research, you know? Um, you can quickly find out that, you know, Venezuela is, yeah, they're struggling. They're struggling, but uh, they're actually, you know, pulling through. They're fighting. They're fighting hard and um, they're, they're making dents, man. They're making some fucking dents and it's, uh, you know, makes me proud and happy to, that they're doing that and, uh, and that whole thing. Again, it's politics aside here. Remember, I'm Cuban. You know, the Cuban army is part of the Venezuelan coalition you know trying to push back the US so and again I'm a US citizen I'm American I'm proud to be an American right now I can't play the song for obvious reasons you know because uh, my country of America pro prohibits that but you know proud to be an American okay but still regardless I ain't stupid right no no we ain't stupid here right we know what the fuck is going on and um you know, they're going to continue to push, but I sincerely doubt that there's going to be any kind of war unless like um, some sort of World War III breaks out and uh, literally when the U.S. is going to war, you know, a direct, you know, um, straight up war with Russia and China, unless something like that happens, I, Venezuela is going to be fine. And there's not going to be no proxy war. There's not going to be any of that shit there. There's just not. Okay. And uh, if there's any going to be any kind of war or any kind of uh, escalation anywhere, I think it's Iran, but hey. That's a video for another day. It's a topic for another day. We'll, we'll definitely be touching on that. Not today. I'm not making any more videos today. I'm already, you know, backed up as it is. And no, I'm not constipated. <laughs> Anyways, the point is that, um, uh, yeah, we just discussed that situation, you know. Um, so I think that um, there's not going to be any real war escalation happening in Venezuela. I really don't. Again, anything can happen. Nobody really knows. Okay? I, for real, your guess is as good as mine, but I really do think that nothing's going to happen there. And um, especially as we're seeing 
um, Venezuela recovering, okay? Slowly but surely, but their economy is recovering and uh, recovering with the help of uh, things like cryptocurrency and other countries. And the fall of the dollar, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of things that are definitely helping Venezuela and are in Venezuela's favor, as I've talked before when I talk about these subjects, as you know, when the whole thing really starts hitting the fan, you know, countries like Venezuela and uh, even Argentina now in this case, uh, we're looking at, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Turkey, I'm looking at a lot of countries out there, even Mexico, I'm not quite sure though, but not quite sure on Mexico yet, but um, the fact that they're gonna, you know, as the cycle, you know, as the cycle uh, runs its course, whoever, you know, for example, right now Venezuela is already at the end of hyperinflation. Argentina is starting their hyperinflation. So meaning that, you know, once the cycle is over, then, you know, the cycle repeats and restarts and it's a, you know, better horizon. So remember, the U.S. says, you know, we're still like halfway or three quarters of the way through the cycle. We got to go through hyperinflation. We got to go through all that. So, you know, but the U.S. is the last piece of the puzzle, the last you know, thing to hyperinflate and fall. But by the time that the U.S. is hyperinflating and falling, we're gonna see other countries are already pushing ahead and I'm looking at, again, like Venezuela, I'm looking at Argentina, I'm looking at, um, you know, a lot of countries around the world right now in which they, the, the further away they're separated from the dollar and have completed the cycle, like Russia and shit like that, the more um, they're gonna benefit at the end of the day. And then, you know, we're gonna see that, um, you know, since the U.S. is gonna fall last, and Europe is gonna fall right before the US. How literally the US will, and, and you know, once the whole thing happens, you know, the US will be in last place. But again, you know, the cycle will, you know, re restart and we'll make our way back up. I hope, I guess, I don't know. But that's it, okay? So, you know, um, right now, I, I, th I think that's it, guys. You know, we've talked a lot about Venezuela. I, um, you know, the, everything is fine in Venezuela. Again, things aren't perfect, but if we're gonna compare just Venezuela to California, uh, uh, there's, there's, it's, it's, I think it's a worse situation in California, all right? All right, but anyways, that's, um, if you guys wanna discuss that more and talk more about this, then please, let's continue the conversation. Ch uh, check out the Discord, okay? Links at the bottom of the description. I also got a link at the top of my channel. Um, we can continue this conversation. Also, let's continue the conversation in the comments. Let's talk about this more. Any questions that you guys have, any um, information that you guys might have, any anything that you guys might have out there and you guys wanna like um, start a discussion or continue a discussion or again, just add to this discussion, please, let's, let's, get, the, let's get that going and the rolling in the comments because remember, you know, there's a lot to talk about here, and um, I'm not the, the, you know, I'm not the fucking king of all the news here, all right? We need all of us to be working on this and helping each other out, and uh, we all got to do our part in the journalistic aspect of this, okay? And especially if there's a lot of you guys on the ground, you know, meaning that you're either Venezuelan or have Venezuelan family members or whatever. Let's, you know, let's get the ball rolling. Let's talk about this, right? Let's start the conversation. Just like I said in my previous video talking about Vene uh, Argentina, if you guys want me to make more videos about this or continue bringing more updates or, you know, again, just talk about other things that are happening in Venezuela, just like Argentina or other countries, then please, I need you guys input. I need you, meaning I, I just need comments down there. I need to know that you guys are interested. And it doesn't have to be some great question. It could just be like awesome video. You know what I mean? Thank you. Um, you answered whatever. It doesn't matter. But you know what I'm saying? Just any kind of comment that will let me know that you guys want me to make more of these videos. Now, of course, if you guys ask a lot of questions or you guys continue the conversation, that's gonna make me obviously wanna make more videos because, well, there's tons of content to cover and you guys are interested in it. So that's how this is gonna work, okay? That's why I was covering Mexico for a while and I still am, but because you guys are crazy interested in Mexico, but I know you guys are interested in other stuff, so you know we're just gonna keep bouncing around all kinds of stuff because I'm, I'm interested in all kinds of stuff too, so. All right, guys, I want to give a big shout out to all you guys. I want to shout out to all my new subscribers, all my old subscribers. I'm almost at 2K. Um, my birthday's on September 18th, and I'm think, I think I'm going to get to 2K before then. That'd be so awesome. Um, anything you guys can do to help, you know, would be great to help me get to those 2K. So you already know, share my channel with your friends. Share this knowledge um, on your other social medias. Just share, share, help share this uh, knowledge. And again, you know, sure, help me in Lambo, but basically, you know, more and more importantly than anything else, to share this knowledge so we can, you know, all be more informed and know what the hell's going on so that we can all, you know, have a fighting chance at, you know, everything that's coming our way, all right? 
for reals. We gotta help you all, we all gotta help each other out because we already know the people in power ain't helping us at all, all right? They're doing the complete opposite. So we all gotta help each other out, all right? So in one form or another. So if, um, if all you can do is just spread this knowledge, you know, uh, then please. And, then, and even if you don't wanna spread the video, I get it. I know I got an ugly face and you might not wanna spread that, but hey, just regurgitate the information or do some more research and do that, you know, just, you know, just speak the knowledge. I don't know, I had a brain fart there. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. <laughs> want to give a big shout out to all my patrons. Want to give a big shout out to every single one of you guys out there, you know, sends, uh, you know, um, donations and support through, you know, the Cash App, through PayPal, through um, Bitcoin, through Digibyte, through, uh, no, no one sent Dash anytime. I just had it on my mind. But regardless, all of you guys, fucking love you. Thank you so much for all the support. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share. Um, please hit that bell icon. Thank you for all the Lambo food. Thank you for all the love and support. And uh, more important, oh, thank you for buying t-shirts. Thank you for the, the buying merchandise. Thank you for everything. Thank you, thank you. I love you guys. You guys are the best. And uh, that's it. Last but not least, don't forget to, yeah, I think I already said it, but let me say it again. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon and uh, stay awesome. See you guys manana. Peace. Hey guys, guess what? Me and Lambo are still here. We haven't left yet. You know why we're here? Because I want to tell you all about this new store that I just opened up. Yeah, that's right. It's our new sponsor as well. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. So, as you guys can see, this is the store. I just opened up the store, I don't know, about a week ago, and um, I'm gonna be selling all my merch and all of our stuff here, whether it's Lambo stickers, whether it's, you know, mugs, t-shirts, jackets, you name it. We got all kinds of stuff that you guys can buy and um, help support the show. Now you get to have your very own shirt or your very own Lambo sticker. And if you guys want any special requests on things for me to put in the store, then please, by all means, let me know and uh, we'll get our graphic artist, you know, on top of it. Yeah, that means you gotta work, Lambo. All right, guys, thank you so much. Love you guys and I'll see you guys manana.